Welcome to day 331 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in CloudFeed. So the DSO anniversary is coming up and there's a date set. So March 25th through the 27th is the time that's set apart for this event. The main event's gonna take place on March 26th. And I think that's gonna take place around 5 p.m. I don't know if, if that's all set yet, but there's a Discord you can join if you wanna help out. And there's also, you if you wanna attend the event, whether it be virtual or in person, you're gonna to want to get a ticket on Eventbrite. Tickets are 100% free, but they need to know how many people are coming to set everything up. So definitely check out the link that is above this video. I have it in the, in the description and click that and register to attend the DSO anniversary, which is again, March 25th to the 27th. What's really interesting is that NFT LA is actually taking place on the 28th and a few days after that. So if you're attending this event and you can stay a few days extra, you can also go to NFT LA, which is gonna be a pretty cool event. Uh, I know the guys from NFTZ are all planning on being there as well. Yeah, and, and I, I think that if you are, if you can only be there one day, of course, make it that Saturday, March 26th, uh, the Friday before. I'm sure there's gonna be some get togethers and, and all that, and probably the Sunday after, but that Saturday is probably the, the biggest day, obviously. That's when the main event's taking place. Uh, if you're gonna be, if you can come one day, come that day. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be interesting. And, and I, I think we're at an interesting point in DSO right now where I think we're kind of at a reflection point where I think things are going to break in a better direct, more positive direction as new nodes start popping up. So I think that it's a, like perfect timing for this. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think Brian and I probably get there the 26th, probably the mor morning of the 26th, early afternoon, and probably stay until the 29th or so. Yeah, so uh, we can but, attend. But so, so we can I, attend NFT LA, and we can uh, maybe talk to some people that outside of DSO about what we're doing. Yeah, for sure. So uh, this downtime, what do you make of this downtime that we're having on DSO? I think you know that we see the coin price. I mean, DSO, the price of DSO is down to I think like forty one dollars. Really, the whole crypto market's kind of in a sag right now, with Bitcoin hovering at around thirty eight thousand. What do you make of this slow period on DSO? I think typically like this is like the life cycle of a typical crypto. Uh, you have these super exciting times like we saw back in the first few months and then like this, this mediocre period, then there's downtime and we're definitely in a downtime right now where I, I think some people are just probably like in a, in a not, I don't want to say bad mood, but I think as a crypto market drops, everybody's like exuberance about crypto, individual crypto projects kind of, lag a little bit but usually what we see is that during these periods of people who are remaining engaged and remaining active and keeping up to date on the technology uh, those are the ones who, who usually succeed in the long run uh, and and i think my biggest advice especially on social since you don't really have to spend money on DSO to actually build a presence i think just just spend a little bit of time your free time uh engaging with people uh making connections uh if you can, if, if you want to build a project on it, it's a, it's a great time to do that. Uh, and and I, I like to look at it as like operating under the radar because once people start noticing the blockchain and the projects on the blockchain, uh, it's usually too late to start building because everybody's building. So I, I think that's probably the best piece of advice I can give. Uh, don't get too down on things because usually you have this, this rocket back up soon after the the trough. Yeah, for sure. I, I think there's going to be some excitement before the birthday bash too, the DSO anniversary too. I just think that's, I think they probably have stuff planned so that when we do have that celebration, we'll be celebrating some new stuff that's coming out, maybe new apps, maybe new features on DSO. But I, I think there's going to be some excitement around then. Yeah. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of things under under wraps like that the core teams are working on i know they don't want to release anything too soon because they don't want to get people's expectations too high but 
core team and then all these third party apps that are really working hard. Uh, I know we're working really hard in NFTZ, push out some really cool features over the course of the next couple of months. And I know there's several other projects with the same mindset. Yeah. So I think, I think we're in this lull. I think probably the next, like maybe, maybe four to six weeks are going to continue to be a lull, but I think we're going to come out of that and we're going to see a lot of really cool things. Yeah, hopefully. And uh, then there's another slightly negative thing that Tyne posted about this morning, actually. And he noted that 0.17% of DSO addresses hold 92.5% of DSO supply. I don't, I don't really know what to make of it other than, you know, there's a few huge whales on DSO who are holding a very large amount of supply. You know, when we don't know what proof of stake is going to be like when it comes out. I know Natter said it's going to be state of the art, but when proof of stake does come out, it's that I, I feel like if point if about what one fifth of a percent of the addresses on DSO hold over 90% of the supply, it's going to kind of make things a little lopsided, but we'll see how, you know, proof of stake works and see what, what that work, how that works into the equation. Well, and eventually you'll see people sell, you'll see people buy. And so it will get diluted down. Um, I don't know the total number of accounts. Um, maybe somebody can reply with that. Um, I'm guessing it's maybe half a million or a million. I might be way off on that. So 0.2% would equate to one or 2,000 accounts, um, which, which is fairly diversified, I guess. Well, but you also had to take in consideration all the bot accounts. It's like... Right. If you eliminate those, that percentage will probably change greatly. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a good point. But yeah, I, I think it's an adequate concern. Uh, <clears throat> we don't know what's going to happen with proof of stake. Is it going to be where you're going to actually earn DSO for staking it? And is that DSO going to be inflationary or not? Uh, it, it's, all, it's all concerns that I think need to be addressed, especially when we figure out more of how this uh, state-of-the-art uh, proof of stake framework is going to work. Um, so I think until then, until we really know, I think it's kind of, uh, I, I think it's important that it's, it's brought up, but I, I think that is kind of, uh, I, I don't think it's time to worry about it right now because we really need more information. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so who were the top earners on Open Prosper yesterday? Yeah. Uh, so it's been, uh, I, I, I think there's a lot of, of NFT sales. So this is, a lot of the earnings from that, but there's been a thousand and uh, 84 different people on DSO that earned in the last 24 hours, whether that's a few pennies or a thousand plus dollars, it, it all depends. Um, in total, 19 people earned at least one DSO, which is approximately $40, $41 or so. And the top earners were Deegan Dudes, uh, Deegan Dudes, uh, $2,571. Uh, then there was Mark Van Z, uh, who earned $694, uh, Seals, $454, Leb Big Mac, $375, Nigel Wallet, $345, and then rounding out the top 10 was Drac, Serial Kisser, Illuminati, Mercury, and ZN Mead. So yeah, I, I mean, congrats to those people. Uh, and I, I, I think that like it's, it's, been, it's been slow. It's been a slower earning week, but... Like I said, I, I think there's some some uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, so 1,084 creators earned DSO, right? And 19 right. earned at least one DSO. So, I, I mean, that's kind of impressive. I mean, for such a slow period of time. I mean, yeah, and, and then I, I just want to look at. Yeah, I just want to go over the top hashtags uh, since, I mean, there hasn't been too much news in the last 24 hours. So I, I kind of like this idea, stats. covering the top hashtags every day. We could do that. Yeah, so the, the top hashtags in the last 24 hours were number one, DSO, number two, NFT, number three, music, number four, photography, and number five, Darmesh's wordplay. Number Hashtag six, wordplay. Krasenstein Daily. <laughs> number six? No, not really. It's not in the list. I'm sure Salil could tell us, but I doubt it was number six. No, definitely not. But yeah, so those are the top hashtags. And then the com top community event today, or the only community event today, taking place on Clubhouse is the Russian Room. Seems like they have this at noon Eastern time every single day. Uh, IT Clubhouse, Decibel, Diso, Altum-based, Ton Place. 
uh, it's with Siva, Fancor, Masha Lin, Simek Ilya, Fedorovic, Yuzik, and Do What You Love, plus several others. Um, so definitely check that out if you haven't already, especially if you speak Russian. But yeah, that's all the news for today. It was kind of not a very action-packed Saturday, but we'll be back to you tomorrow on Monday.